Good morning. Welcome to the inaugural week of Carolina People, right here on Fox 43. This week we'll be focused on some of the Carolina's finest friends of scouting. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This week we've been visiting with some of the Carolina's finest friends of scouting. And today we're honored to be with another fabulous friend of scouting, Orby Ferguson. Thanks for being with us, Orby. Thank you, Greg. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. Are you a PD area native? I am. I, uh, I was born and raised in Sumter. I uh, spent 47 years there. I'm, I'm now residing in Myrtle Beach. We. Uh, career opportunity encouraged us to move in 1993, but I am a native of Sumter, South Carolina. So you are uh, truly a member of the PD Area Council? Absolutely. Both from birth as well as currently? Sure. Absolutely. How long have you been on the, the board of the council, on the council? I've served on the PD Area Council a little over four years. Okay. Is there a particular uh, a focus of your service? Well, I, I began uh, Outside of uh, serving on the board, I, I began as a district chairman for the uh, Chicora District, which encompasses uh, the scouting activities in Horry County. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also served um, for three years as chairman of our Friends of Scouting campaign, and that is a, a very significant fundraising initiative that uh, the Boy Scouts uh, are engaged in each year, and this uh, obviously supplements the, uh, the funding that perhaps uh, United Way uh, is not able to subsidize, and that is a, uh, it's a big part of the fundraising initiative in, uh, in support of scouting in Horry County. Absolutely. So there is a Friends of Scouting not only in the Chicora district, but in each of the four districts within the council? Ab absolutely. Okay. Sure. You grew up attending Camp Coker? Absolutely. I, uh, I joined scouting in Sumter at um, the earliest possible age, and uh, made many uh, many trips to Camp Coker uh, as a uh, as a youngster in the in scouting, and I uh, was fortunate to uh, achieve the rank of Eagle. You and, achieved uh, an Eagle, absolutely, mm -hmm. sure did. And we, uh, after serving in scouting, uh, getting married. Uh, I didn't. I was fortunate to have two girls, no, no future Boy Scouts, but mm. um, continued to, to work in the scouting initiative, and and uh, it's a it's a, a very um, noble organization. Uh, obviously, builds some builds the character that we're looking for in our youth today, and I'm just a pleasure to be associated with it. Or what brought you to Myrtle Beach? I um, I've been in banking for 33 years. 33. Um, uh, began in Sumter with South Carolina National Bank. I, I tell my friends and associates that I've been in banking for five decades. I started in 1969 mm -hmm. and worked there for a little over 25 years. And the career opportunity that presented itself shortly after the merger in 1991 with Wachovia Bank, mm -hmm. um, I accepted the, uh, the transfer to Myrtle Beach uh, as um, the city exec with responsibilities for um, Ori and Georgetown counties. And of course, I think as, as most know, we've just uh, completed another merger with, uh, with, with First Union, uh, now the new Wachovia, and yes. I currently serve as market president for, uh, for the two counties, Ori and Georgetown. For Ori and Georgetown. Well, within our viewing area, obviously, they, would there be another market president for the PD? Uh, there, there is a market president in um, in Florence, right here, and that happens to be John Banks, and who's also very involved in the scouting initiative here in in Florence. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I have a, another counterpart in Sumter who's a market president as well in, in these in these uh, particular markets. And the uh, Robinson and Scotland County are they laid out similarly? Uh, are market presidents are laid out in geographic areas? Obviously, you know South Carolina yes. particularly well. But most uh, most states have an equal uh, breakup in multiple counties. Absolutely, and we we have a, a similar presence in in Wilmington and in Fayetteville, one of the largest cities in North mm -hmm. Carolina as well. Mm -hmm. Your involvement with the uh, obviously your involvement started in early age uh, uh, 
uh, in Cub Scouts and attending Camp Coker. Have you been to Camp Coker recently? I have not, uh, but I understand there's, there's been tremendous change there, uh, all, of course, for the positive, and I'm looking forward to, to going back and, uh, and experiencing that again. We heard this week about the capital campaign underway to help uh, raise funds, not only for the improvements out of Camp Coker, for the service center, as well as the activities benefiting all uh, uh, scouts throughout uh, throughout the state um, are there or throughout the council excuse me are, are there activities that you keep a particular focus on um, uh, on a daily basis outside of scouting but uh, volunteer activities that you've been involved with in Ori and Georgetown County well I, I was the former last year I served as chairman of the United Way of Ori County and I think is as most know, uh, that is a very significant uh, benevolent fundraising initiative in Horry County. We serve over 32 uh, agencies in, uh, in and around Horry County, and of course one is, uh, is the Boy Scouts, and that's yes. a significant part of the uh, United Way umbrella. Absolutely. And uh, I've been very pri privileged to serve as campaign chairman and currently serve on the board of uh, United Way of Horry County. Currently. What was your first job uh, as a child, Orvin? Well, I worked, I think, um, as a bag boy at a grocery store. And, you know, I think most folks either deliver newspapers or maybe work as, in grocery stores, but I probably, uh, relatively speaking, thought that I'd make made more money than I ever needed at 25 cents an hour bagging groceries at a grocery store. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that began is you know to, to create a kind of a level of responsibility for me and and uh but it was a bag boy in a grocery store so your and your interest in banking started right after college or is that something at an early age i, I did i um, um i learned after graduating from college there was there was a position in the bank i applied for it and was very fortunate to uh, uh to have been given that opportunity and um I told someone that uh, I have been in banking, as I mentioned, already 33 years mm -hmm. with the same company. And now we, the names have changed, but it's through through mergers and acquisitions, not because I've been looking to uh, pursue a banking career elsewhere. Right. If you weren't the market president for Wachovia right now, do you have any idea of something you think you'd be doing? You know, I, I don't know. I have. Um, I, I think that. Uh, you know the old cliche. I would have left long ago if people wouldn't accuse me of taking the easy way out. But it's uh, it's been a it's been a great uh, opportunity, and I think probably I, I mean I've, I enjoy finance. I enjoy working with people, and and um, it would probably be something uh, in the financial consulting uh, mm -hmm. uh, area. But um, uh, that's water over the dam right now. I've uh, I've been in banking for as long as I have, and that's that's really the only interest that I have right now. 33 years with the same company, um, a, a lifelong activity with the PD Area Council of the Boy Scouts, someone who grew up going to Camp Coker, attained as Eagle Scout, and is now um, continues to serve an ongoing role with the PD Area Council. Orby, we thank you so much for your support, and we hope you'll maintain the, the type of su significance you have over the last number of years for many years going forward. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming right up. Stay tuned, B. Webb Jones Jr. joins Greg next with more Carolina People. Good morning, welcome back to Carolina People. This week we've been visiting with some fabulous friends of scouting here at the PD Area Council Service Center in Florence. Today we're thankful to have Dr. Webb Jones with us. Thanks for being here. I'm glad to be here, Greg. I know you had a long trip to get over here. It's, uh, it's been a, what a heck of a drive. It was, yeah. I walked about 100 feet. <laughs> the, the council is very happy to be next door. I'm sure they uh, probably come over to see you pretty regularly. Well, we stay in touch with each other. I'm sure. I'm sure. You, you've you been on the executive board for? Three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. And you did you grow up in Florence? I, I'm a native Florentine. I was born and raised here and uh, uh, educated in Florence. I uh, went to Clemson University and uh, Went to dental school in Charleston at the Medical University of South Carolina. Uh, following that, I spent three years in, in the Army, uh, dental corps. And then after that, uh, I went to the Medical College of Georgia and did my specialty training in periodontics. In periodontics? Mm-hmm. 
I'm sure a lot of viewers know what periodontics is, but uh, I'd hate to say it. I, I don't have that familiarity. Would you mind telling me a little about periodontics? Well, a periodontist is a dentist who specializes in treating problems that affect uh, the supporting tissues for the teeth, the gums and the bone around the teeth. And we try to keep people from losing their teeth to gum disease. Mm. Well, that's a very active urge. I'm sure you must have a... There are a lot of folks I know. I, I've had some, some gum problems in the past and have, and have quite a bit of work done. So that's a... I, I must have had some, some uh, involvement with a periodontist. Yeah. You grew up uh, active with the PD Area Council. Did you attend Camp Coker as, oh, as yes. a youth? Oh, yes. I came up through scouting. Uh, I was a Cub Scout and a Boy Scout and an Explorer Scout here in Florence. Hmm. Uh, got my Eagle Scout Award when I was uh, 15. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, going on a national jamboree uh, with a troop from Florence. And then I also got to go to uh, South America for a South American jamboree that three United States troops attended in 1965. And so uh, I was very, very active in scouting. Scouting was wonderful to me, and it was wonderful for me. Do you, do you have any family that's still involved in scouting? Uh, outside of having children go through scouting, uh, no, mm -hmm. uh, other than myself. So you were active as, as, as a parent with... Uh... Yes, I had a son who went through uh, scouting here in Florence the same, as, the same way I did, and he, he's also an Eagle Scout. How long have you been practicing? here at per Periodontics? 22 years. 22 years. Mm -hmm. So you've had a, and your office is located? Right next door is 712 South Coy Street. 712 South Coy. So within your your um, your patients travel, uh, are there many other periodontists in the, in the PD area? Well, yeah, there are. Uh, I see patients from uh, as far away as uh, Hamlet and Rockingham, North Carolina, mm. and as far south as King Street, and uh, as far west as Hartsville and east over to Marion Mullins area. So very much a, 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 a geographic uh, overview of our of our TV market. Mm -hmm, yeah, covers our market very well. How did you become involved in scouting? Was this something? Was there a scout troop um, at at a church or at? Uh, well, once my son uh, graduated from high school and went to college, uh, I had a friend who was on the executive board. Uh, who knew of my past involvement with scouting, and he asked me if I would consider serving on the uh, PDA Council's board. Mm -hmm. And I agreed to attend a meeting, and after I attended a meeting and had the privilege to listen to the executive director, Jim Head, um, I asked him to have lunch, and we had lunch, and he and I talked about the council and where it was going and what was going to need, be needed to uh, be done to make the council prosper mm -hmm. and uh, became more involved at that point. Webb, would you mind talking about how the Im what the impact of scouting has been on your life? For me personally? For you personally. Scouting was uh, something that gave me an opportunity to um, develop as a person with my peers uh, and develop the core values that I have today. Uh, I developed my core values from my upbringing at home, uh, from my church experiences as a child growing up, and from scouting. And scouting is a, a wonderful program that allows young people like myself to, with their friends, develop skills, confidence, self-esteem in what they're doing uh, that can't be gained any other place. And the confidence that I gained from scouting, I think had a lot to do with my ability to make decisions to push forward and do the things I wanted to do in school and in life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And speaking of life, if you, I was just thinking about this, if you weren't a periodontist, mm -hmm. do you have any idea what you'd be doing? Obviously you'd be volunteering with your activities with the Boy Scouts. Well, but... there, there, if I wasn't a periodontist, um, there's probably no telling what I would be doing. Uh, uh, other <clears throat> interests that I had in life were construction and uh, I'm not a hobby enthusiast with construction, but I've always liked the outdoors, and, and I might have been in the construction business, but mm -hmm. it's hard for me to imagine not, not doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, was, I was built for this job. That's wonderful. Uh, within the past year, are there any accomplishments that you're particularly proud of, whether it relates to the PDA Council or within your own life? Well, for the council itself, what I'm proudest of is the comeback that this council's made. This council 
uh, was having a tremendous amount of difficulty and was really uh, in trouble. Uh, when Jim Head came here, he um, put together a team of business people to help him gain the confidence of the community at large and the business community, which is very important for the success uh, of uh, an organization like the Boy Scouts of America. In order for this organization to succeed, it's got to have the support of the local community. And Jim has helped us do that. And I'm proud that the council has made the comeback. We had an endowment campaign last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have made uh, over a million dollars worth of improvements to Camp Coker, which is our uh, summer camp. Uh, the, we have bought the service center, and we now have a fine place for the staff and for training of uh, volunteers uh, and a scout shop. And so <clears throat> Boy Scouting in the PD is on the comeback, and I'm, I'm very proud of that. It shows. Well, I was about to ask you, who inspires you? And then I looked up on the wall right behind you and saw that we're sitting in the Barry Webb Jones Sr. Executive Boardroom. Obviously, your father had a dramatic impact on your life. Jim Heads had a big impact. My father was extremely supportive of everything that I needed to do uh, that was important in my life. And he had friends who also were very supportive, and their children mm -hmm. uh, participated in the same activities. And uh, my father and Saunders Bridges and Bernie Moore and Jack Nettles and uh, uh, Bill Sprague and a number of people who had an influence on my life as a scout uh, made, made it possible. And I'll always be grateful for that. Men like Webb's father encouraged him to get involved with the PDA Council of the Boy Scouts, um, served as an Eagle Scout and is now on the executive board. Webb, thanks so much for your time. Greg, my pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks for letting us do this. Absolutely. Stay tuned for more Carolina people coming right up. Coming up next, Scout Executive and CEO Jim Head joins Greg again on the set of Carolina People. Welcome back to Carolina People. Today we're visiting with Scout Executive and CEO Jim Head, who is uh, the over the PD Area Council of the Boy Scouts. We're here at the Service Center on South Coit Street in Florence. Thanks so much for being with us, Jim. It's my pleasure. It's been a, gr a great week focused on the PD Area Council. So much has come out this week. It's, uh, we're very blessed that you opened the doors to let us uh, uh, come in and get the word out about what's happened with the council. The council serves so many, count uh, so many counties within South Carolina. I think 24, 25 percent of the state's geography is served by the PD Area Council. And to hear earlier in the week about uh, uh, the, the Columbia Camp being shut down for a year while they're doing work, and that's going to expand Camp Coker, all the involvement going on with the preparation for October 29th DCA dinner, a gigantic uh, uh, event coming up on the horizon. But there's still so many things that the Council has on tap. Are there any big projects that uh, viewers be interested in? Well, I think one of the things that we're, we're real excited about is the construction of a new dining hall. And this mm -hmm. is a major undertaking that we're going to try to do, and hopefully we'll be able to complete that, that function in 2003 uh, with an increased demand that we're having for camp, with the new programs that we're offering out of camp for scouters and non-scouters. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a real dire need for us. Uh, Bruce Lee Foundation has given a major league gift to make that thing come to a reality, but we're still going to need some financial support for that. But if you'd allow me for just a second, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here and also to bring the volunteers who are the heart of what Boy Scouting is all about. And I thank that you've had an, an opportunity to see all the different personalities that come together to make the PD Area Council and Boy Scouts of America, a functioning organization. We refer to our organization as a movement and not as the Boy Scouts. And as a movement, we also kind of refer to us as a scouting family. And it's people who have like ideas, like values, like, like beliefs, and most of all, duty to God. And 
this opportunity to showcase what we're all about and to talk about how people's lives have been impacted by scouting. You had some wonderful Eagle Scouts throughout the uh, the day, Orby Ferguson, who's just a hoot no matter where you go, uh, Alan Clemens, Dr. Jones, Bruce Berrigan, people like Ed Levy who have dedicated so much time, of their time and their money, to make sure that others are reached. It's a very special thing that these people bring to the community and to our society. And we're very honored to be associated with these individuals. Very definitely. When you talk about the family, the council's family, the family has grown so much during your tenure, your very short tenure, in the lives of professionals of a five-plus-year five year tenure here at the PDA Council. You've done so much as scout executive, reaching out. When we talk about those 11 counties, you know, I, traveling up from, from Myrtle Beach uh, earlier this week to think about just that hour and a quarter, hour and a half drive to Florence, then to travel over to Bennettsville and to Hartsville and over to Sumter and all the areas on a daily basis that you're not only thinking about but traveling to, making the commitment to. Obviously, you're a volunteered, you're a volunteered, paid commitment. Uh, your, your level of commitment has been superior, and I think uh, that, that shows within the volunteer level throughout the council. Well, you're very kind, but the truth of the matter is, it's people like yourself and the other volunteers who service this council that have made these things happen and made them possible. It's, it's a pleasure to, to travel areas because every time I go, I'm going to get to visit with somebody whose true dedication is serving other people. And I'll tell you, it's a special blessing that's given to me. I'd like to take credit for all these wonderful yeah. things, but I have committees, as you've talked about, that really run the council, that make these things happen. And all I have to do is, as I'm directed, and, and assist occasionally in some areas. So it's a special thing that's going on in our council, and it's a special time in which scouting and the values of scouting are truly needed. Jim, folks who sit sitting at home watching, if they wanted to be involved with the Boy Scouts, the PDA Council, how could they volunteer their time? If they would simply call, again, area code 843-662-6306 and let us know that they have an interest, we have a desperate need for volunteers. With our growth rate, that we, we've grown from 4,600 kids to over 12,000 kids. I guarantee you, we need expertise in every field. As, as Mr. Drayton talked about, we need we need architects, we need engineers and contractors, and we need people who are familiar with the scouting program, and we need people who don't know a thing about scouting, but who bring management expertise, who are interested in the same values and principles that we espouse as a movement. So virtually anyone can volunteer to be active as scouting. And we need we need their help. We desperately need their help, I guarantee you. 843-662-6306. Yes, sir. Well, I, are there any projects that are coming up this year that uh, have primary focus for the council? I think as we, as we began to wrap down, and we're really not wrapping down, we're really wrapping up because we're mm -hmm. going through our mm -hmm. school rallies right now. We're making the program available to thousands of young people throughout the 11 counties that we serve. But the Distinguished Citizens Dinner is going to be a highlight. Yeah. It's a special event. It's an event that, that I don't think anybody can attend and walk away without having their life touched and changed in a little bit. When we recognize the individuals such as Billy Powers, Reverend Diggs, Emerson Gower, and my good friend, Ashby Lyermore, it's, not, it's an event, it's an evening that, that kind of pulls everything together. You know, I'm not so sure the scouting's values really kick in until we're 30 years old. I think that's when all the things that we go through really, really have our impact, and that's when we appreciate all we learned when we were youth. Anything in particular, um, any, any changes you'd like to see happen within the council? Is there anything, obviously it's heading in a spectacular direction. It's, it's gotten recognition for the fastest growing council in the nation. Uh, it's recently moved council levels to a, a much more recognized council level. Uh, the, the, capital, the capital campaign is going well. Friends of Scouting is definitely an area within each of the, within each of the uh, districts that is vital. 
I guess if there was one thing that I would really like to see happen is that every young person, child, boy or girl who is interested in the scouting program would have an opportunity to become part of our family. I'd like to see the new mascots, which we have the pleasure of announcing and launching as a new program, be introduced to each one of these young people, especially in the elementary school, so that they could just get a little bit of flavor of the fun and the excitement, and then give us the opportunity to truly create that environment so those young people can make ethical decisions throughout their lifetime. Thank you, Jim. To be with a man who's given almost 50 years of his life to the Boy Scouts of America and someone who's helped bring the Pediary Council to the level it is today and well into the future. We thank you, Jim Head. We thank the Pediary Council. We thank all volunteers and all paid staffers and pray that uh, the Pediary Council will have equal success going forward. Thanks again. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Greg will be right back to wrap up today's show after these words from our sponsors. Welcome back to Carolina People. We want to thank Jim Head and all the staff here at the Pediary Council of the Boy Scouts. Hope you'll tune in next week for more Carolina People.